Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about a feature inside of most DAWs, Pro Tools in this case, that can speed up and clean up your tracks really fast and really conveniently. Thank you for watching. My name is Malcolm Ohmflood. Like I said, this is a really basic feature, but some people don't know it exists and you might not have thought about how you could effectively be using this feature either. So maybe you already know it's there, but you just haven't figured out why you would use it. This video is going to help you. I'm going to go through, I think, three things that could be useful in how to use strip silence and as well as just First off, I think that's what we'll do first. I'll just show you Strip Silence in action. Okay, so as you can see, I've loaded in two example tracks into the session here, just to show you what's going on. I've got a vocal and a guitar. Now, it looks like there's a whole lot of music happening right here on this top guitar track, eh? But there isn't. If I zoom out, you can actually see that really there's just one little part here, right here. The rest of this, all of this is nonsense noise that I wish was never sent to me. <laughs> so like, let's crank that up and just show you what's existing in your session if you're not cleaning it up. Just hiss, buzz, rumbling. Effects getting ready. So <laughs> I will admit in this case, that is definitely like the coolest sounds <laughs> that has been in the pre uh, prelude of what's actually meant to exist later when the guitar actually starts playing. But the fact of the matter is that stuff shouldn't be there by the time it goes to mixing. It's not a big deal. I can clean it up using strip sounds as I'll show you. It takes no time at all. But if you want to send tracks to another engineer or collaborate with another artist or to just try and be like as professional as you can be, getting rid of that stuff is really important. And this band, great band, is paying me to do their mix. I'm not angry at, about it at all. But if I was sending this, like a song I produced, to get mixed by somebody that I respected, I would definitely clean this up. It's just how I was taught, I think. And there is a chance that this stuff could be audible after all of the levels of compression that could happen in a song. So it actually could become a problem, even if it was really, really quiet when you recorded it, that stuff could get squeezed louder and you just, only want what you actually intended to put into the song to exist. So that happened on a guitar track. Let's quickly look at a vocal because that's going to be less musical usually. So I've zoomed in here and as you can see, there is all of this noise here. Let's crank it up. Again, room sound, somebody drinking water, somebody's listening to the noises, <laughs> or actually that's probably headphone bleep. But there's a bunch of stuff and in the vocal, which is going to be very loud in the final mix, this could totally be a problem. Again, I had to amplify it a lot. So not a big deal, but if you're like me, you don't want it to exist. I can't, I just can't handle it existing. <laughs> so that is what the problem is. Now strip silence is the solution. So the main benefit of strip silence to me anyways, is how I would usually use it is to clean up something like this vocal. So I'll show you how I use strip silence now and we can clean this vocal up really quickly. I've got a shortcut command U that'll bring up strip silence, but if you want to find it yourself and you're in Pro Tools, just go to edit and then you will find strip silence down here. Click that. There you go. You got it there, ready to go. So as you can see, there's a few different parameters here. We have strip threshold, min strip duration, clip start pad, and clip end pad. First thing I would recommend is grabbing your minimum strip duration because what this is doing is listening for anything that is below a certain volume and then deleting it from our region bin here. So if I crank that up to a more reasonable amount, you can see that we now have like right here, one big block where if I crank it down, it starts noticing little noises. Like I can zoom in here. This little click here is louder. So it's trying to save that. So it's just a little cleaner if we just crank this up a little bit to start. And now we've kind of got each little vocal stanza, as you can see, is now in its own little blurb, which is great. That's actually exactly what we wanted, pretty much. And if you wanted, if you're worried about like an ending being cut off, say like somebody sustaining a note and it's fading out, maybe we can find an example of that here. Like that's gonna be really tight. This is chopping right at the end of them being audible. You can grab, grab clip and pad and just drag that to the right and then you can put your own fade in and just like that you can also do it at the start now you can fine tune a little bit let's try going a little tighter here there we go so that's very tight probably too tight on the start of the word now so now i'm going to grab my clip start pad back that off that looks perfect let's just look at another stanza 
this one looks not very good that one's pretty good perfect perfect i would say that's looking great across the whole track here we could even go over to the next section scan that might need to go tighter here singing quieter or recorded quieter who knows what happened there but for this first section we kind of got it nailed in i would just strip it and then if you wanted to tighten this up you could just crank this up a little higher and strip now all of that work it's done in two buttons amazing click over here let's look at this section i like to do it in sections you can probably get really close by just grabbing the whole track but i recommend just a section there we go let's just zoom in make sure we can see what's going on okay looks good we're gonna get just a little tighter there you go and it looks like we need to extend our end pad for this section every once in a while you just might have to do something manually there we go that looks really good you start to get a feel for this as well strip bang all right that whole track has been edited and then we can grab the whole thing strip it again it gets rid of those <laughs> chunks i missed and whole vocal is now cleaned up all of those noises are gone same with guitar if we reset our uh, clip gain on this section grab the whole thing and set a little minimum strip and just crank the threshold until we only have what we want we'll have to set a little pad there strip whole track is done we just have to look at one little blip that i know is noise there we go across a huge session with like 100 tracks that's going to save you a ton of time and that is again just one way of using strip silence that is like a key benefit so you can think of it as track cleanup when you are trying to get rid of the tops and tails of your takes and just really make the whole session very clean some people do this while they record you know somebody finishes a take they immediately strip silence it and then move on to a new take so like when they're searching through it's already done it's a very efficient clean way to go but you could also just do it only on the keepers once you've picked that keeper. And that's the way I choose to do it myself when I'm tracking. Another really cool way to think about strip silence is if you want to addition different performance aspects. So you might think of a kick or a snare drum. So I've got a snare drum here and say we wanted to just find a certain hit and then be able to use that in other places in the song or uh, sample it or whatever. Like this is a live snare drum, so probably not this, but like you can kind of get the idea of what I'm going for just with this example, I think. So we'll start this from scratch. Say you wanted to separate these snare hits, you grab the track, I would start bringing the threshold up until we start seeing cuts, there we go. And now that looks pretty good, but we're gonna need to extend our tail. So grab the clip end pad, so we get the whole thing there as far as you want. And then we might be able to go a little further with our threshold. Yeah, there we go. Cause Probably one of the louder hits is going to be one of the better sounding hits anyways. Extend the threshold a little bit more. And we could try that. Let's just check this out for curiosity. There we go. Just the snares. We kind of auto-gated it. Now, you could use that as a gate. Wouldn't recommend it. I would do it a different way, but that's another video. But if you want to do audition hits, parts, performances you could totally do that say you had somebody just trying different grooves and they were just kind of like you know not recording to a click you're just letting them roll and you just don't want to interrupt them and then you have to go grab these different performances you just strip silence between all of those different takes drag them together arrange how you want very powerful so the third and final example i can think of would be a, like a podcast situation or any dialogue multi-dialogue situation and i'm sure there's a lot more use cases for strip silence but these are just three good examples say you had three people and one person's talking that person's bleed is going to be in the other two people's microphones and you can just use strip silence to clean out each of those three channels for each speaker to only be live only have dialogue in the session when they're actually talking not when their co-host or guest is speaking and it's just way quicker than trying to manually click chop and, and go through it that way you could also use a gate but if you want this, the session to be dead silent there i would personally use strip silence so very simple concept today and again i think this is in every daw next time you're cleaning up the tops and tails of your tracks try using strip silence you can just get a shortcut going and make it really really quick i think you'll like it you'll find some way to use it that suits you
If you enjoyed this and want more tips and tricks on engineering, mixing, editing, the whole works, please do subscribe. And if you want a free mixing resource, there is a free workshop down below in the description called Standalone Mixes that is hosted by Benedict Hine of the Self Recording Band podcast, which I am a co-host of. Check out that podcast if you haven't already. Again, free resource teaches you how to get better mixes using the tools you already own. So no pressure there, nothing to buy. Just try checking it out. Lots of people have been loving it. I think you will too. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.